This is the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. It is not Caleb Turner today. It is Bob, his personal sound man, as Caleb is under the weather today. And we'll be back with this next week on the broadcast. But until then, I'm going to fill in for him today on the broadcast. We've got a couple things we're going to talk about. Uh, the differences between chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Uh, differences between Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. Those are requested topics by a certain individual, which we will mention later on in the broadcast. A couple other things we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some sports. The upcoming Seahawks playoff showdown with, with the Atlanta Falcons there in the divisional championship game. Divisional championship game, yes. But, in, but first, we have to get our break. Uh... And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Excuse me for my slowness, but we're going to try to get through that. You got it. The Anchor Radio Network. Seahawks and Falcons live on the Anchor Radio Network this Sunday as the Seahawks look to dethrone the Falcons at the Georgia Dome. Coverage begins at 10 o'clock, kickoff at 10.15. Seahawks and Falcons, the divisional championship final, live Sunday on the Anchor Radio Network. You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now, your host, Caleb Turner. It is Bob Phillips sitting in for the sick Caleb Turner live today on January 5th. That was last week's broadcast. January 10th, 2013. An earlier edition of the Caleb Turner Talk Show coming to you live on this Thursday night. From our downtown Coquitlam, British Columbia, Canada studios here in downtown Coquitlam. Caleb is listening to the broadcast from his house, probably sipping chicken noodle soup and other things to make you feel better. We got a good show planned for you today. It's going to be more of a smaller one because I am not a professional talk show host like Mr. Turner is. So we might as well jump right in. To our first discussion today, differences between chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Now, I, I think uh, many people uh, enjoy ice cream. I am a huge ice cream fanatic. And if you could see me right now, you would know that I am an ice cream fanatic. For one reason. I eat a lot of it. And because I eat a lot of it, you can see it on me. I'm a more of a bigger individual, unlike the thin, trim, slim Jim. Caleb Turner, the uh, main host of this particular show. And every time that uh, when we introduce uh, after a commercial break, we're going to just keep saying, this is your host, Caleb Turner. Well, it isn't. It's actually Bob Phillips. But anyways, that is part of the procedure. Differences between chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Now, I prefer chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream. Um, no, I'm not black. I am a white person. But... I do prefer chocolate ice cream over vanilla ice cream. Now, I do like chocolate and vanilla mixed. And, um, no, I'm not a creamy, but anyways. Ah, this is, this is, this is sad. Anyways, I think people, uh, think chocolate and vanilla ice cream, um, are made, uh, differently. And I think a lot of people, though, more than the differently made people, I think that they think that they are made the same. And just, you know, vanilla is flavored with vanilla flavoring. I'm just going to read you a little couple of sentences of the differences between chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Ice cream is called vanilla when vanilla or vanilla flavoring is added. Chocolate has some form of chocolate added for flavoring. Vanilla is a different color than chocolate. Duh. They have completely different flavors and they both have different ingredients added for flavoring. I thought it was interesting that um, chocolate ice cream is actually made with some forms of chocolate. It's not just artificial flavoring. Now, vanilla ice cream is made with vanilla, but there is some artificial flavoring put in the vanilla ice cream. Now, I don't know about you, but I tend to think that parents like their kids eating vanilla ice cream over chocolate ice cream. I think it's this understood thing that chocolate ice cream is bad for you. 
and that it's going to put lots and lots and lots and lots of pounds on you and going to kill your teeth. I don't think so. I think, I think chocolate ice cream is good for you. Look at what it's made from. It's made from the cocoa bean. It's got to be healthy. So, cocoa bean is a vegetable. It comes from the ground. It's got to be healthy. Anything from the ground is healthy. Anything that looks like dirt is healthy. Whether it's fibered cereal or something, no. No, chocolate, chocolate ice cream, I think, is a good way for parents to occupy their kids during the day. For instance, let's say parents comes home from a long day of work, and on his or her way home from work, she thinks, oh boy, the kids are going to be home from school, you know, babysitter's going to leave, or however it works for you. And, oh boy, this ought to be interesting. They're probably going to be cranky. They're probably just going to be, uh... You get home, park the car in the garage or outside, whether you're rich or poor. You know you're rich or poor if you have a garage. If you have a garage, you're rich. If you don't, you're poor. If you have a carport, like a, like a non... Well, a covered area for your car, but not, like, fully covered where you can, like, put your tools and stuff like that then you're kind of mid-range. Mid, mid-range to lower than mid-range. And we have one of those. Uh, me and my wife, we have one of those. And um, they're not cool. Uh, people can still see your car. And I think that that may be something that people don't like having because they don't want people to see their car, especially if you own like a Lamborghini Diablo or something like that. Anyways, back to the chunk of the ice cream. So you pull home, you pull in the garage, you pull up to the driveway, or whatever you do. You get out, you go up to the door, you open your door, and you walk in. And it's quiet. And it's surprisingly quiet. You walk in, around the corner, and there at the table is your three kids eating chocolate ice cream. And you're looking around, and you're like, what's going on here? Where'd you guys get the chocolate ice cream? And apparently, the babysitter had brought chocolate ice cream with her, put it in the freezer before you uh, came downstairs and saw her, and was going to use that as a distraction for her to go and do social networking. Can you believe that? Of all the things in the world, your babysitter buys chocolate ice cream to keep the kids occupied so she can go and do her own thing. Pretend if it's vanilla ice cream. You're coming home after a long day at work, him or her. Whatever the case may be, babysitter's watching the kids. You pull up to the carport, garage, or you park the car out in the street. Or up on a driveway. You walk into the house. The place is going nuts. Clothes are being thrown all over the place. Bears, stuffed bears, stuffed animals, Lego blocks are all over the floor. Dollies, um, whatever your kids play with. Barbies, or Rescue Heroes, or... I don't know what kids play with these days. What do kids play with these days, Sam? What do they play with? You have three kids. What do they play with? They don't play with that? What? Build-A-Bear, American Girl, stuff like that. You know, Webkins, yeah. I recognize that name. Webkins is a sin. God never created Webkins. He created Kins. There you go. So you come home, and, and the place is just going crazy, and you're like, what happened? And whatever your babysitter's name is, you know, Maria, that sounds like a babysitter's name, Maria or Kathy, what happened to the kids? And she's just, like, standing there freaked out, and she's like, I only gave them vanilla ice cream. And I can totally see that. Chocolate and vanilla ice cream, the difference is. Yeah, I... I I think that when people think that kids aren't supposed to have ice cream because it's unhealthy for them. Incorrect statement, people. Ice cream is good for you. It's milk. It's calcium. It'll build your bones. And if you have chocolate ice cream, you're eating a veggie. Cocoa bean. Duh. And I think all these people that... That even eat vanilla ice cream. Vanilla 
is a plant. Hey. I don't know. Chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Recommended topic by a by the Miss Ebony McNeil in Tacoma, Washington. And she's recommended a lot of topics. It wasn't my idea to put the chocolate and vanilla ice cream. Caleb just texted it to me, since how he knew that I was giving the broadcast, so he just texted it to me, and I figured, well, hey, I guess we gotta do what the boss says. There you have it, folks. Chocolate and vanilla ice cream, the differences, and a little personal illustration used. When we come back, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Seahawks' road to the playoffs. And their big clash with the Atlanta Falcons at the Georgia Dome Sunday. All that and more. The Caleb Turner Talk Show, Bob, filling in for the master. You got it on the Anchor Radio Network. Treat your kids right with back-to-school deals at Future Shop, Best Buy, and Staples. Buy your kids a tablet or a computer laptop to help them with their studies. We got laptops on sale starting at $199.99, tablets starting on sale at $99.99, and check this one out, iPod Touch, $199.99. You gotta get your kids looking good as they get back into the second semester. That is Best Buy, Future Shop, and Staples. You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. Bob Phillips sitting in for the sick Caleb Turner. Moving right along, here live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Discussing the Seattle Seahawks' incredible season, especially the past couple of weeks, and their big, big playoff win over. I think a very, very decent team. They're at... Washington, D.C. with the Redskins. I know RG3 was hurt. I know Washington had a lot of rookies, but you know what? Seattle had a lot of rookies. And check this one out. Chris Clemens got hurt in the third quarter. Key defender for the Seattle Seahawks. So Seattle had their injury. And their starting kicker got hurt. Hauschka. So, I, I, I don't know. It was a good win for the Seahawks, let's just say that. But moving right along, for Coach uh, Pete Carroll, and for his coaching staff, and for Russell Wilson, Marshawn Lynch especially, this next game against the Atlanta Falcons will define who the Seahawks really are. It's going to define whether or not they actually have what it takes to be a Super Bowl contender. I'm already convinced they are. But for the fans that are sitting on the edge, like maybe some of you out there are listening in, and maybe you aren't fully on the bandwagon, this is where you find out if the Seahawks are for real or not. I think they are. They, I think they've proven in the last several weeks that they are truly a Super Bowl contender team. But they're going to go into the tough, tough lounge Georgia Dome. I'd say it's one of the second or third toughest places to play. In the NFL, obviously with uh, CenturyLink Field being the toughest place to play here in Seattle. I shouldn't say here in Seattle, but in this general direction, in the Northwest. Matt Ryan, Michael Turner, Julio Jones, Tony Gonzalez, the rest of the gang, they're all going to be ready to play. They're all going to be ready game day, ready to play the Seattle Seahawks. This is a team that is known to for their first round exits. And I know Atlanta has something to prove. They're on home field. They've got the one of the best records in the league. They're almost impossible to beat. This is where Seattle can really, really make a statement. And if they win, they play the winner. I guess I should say whoever wins plays the winner of San Francisco Green Bay. And of course, Seattle's going to be the winner. No questions asked. But obviously, they're not going to have Chris Clemens, as he is done for the rest of the season and possibly into the start of next season with the ACL injury. Towards ACL. But I think the Seahawks are going to be ready. I think they're going to be ready come game day, 10-15 kickoff from Atlanta. They are going to be ready 
to kick the Falcons out of the playoffs. And I still hold to what Caleb said a couple of weeks ago on the broadcast. He still hopes Denver and Seattle, that is still very, very likely and probably one of the biggest possibility matchup right now if you look at the teams that are left. I'm looking forward to Baltimore. I can't wait for that game. Ray Lewis, wow. Looks good. Seahawks and Falcons, we have the call here on the Anchor Radio Network. I think the key for the Seahawks is going to be get your run game going. Chew the clock up. Atlanta's quarterback, Matt Ryan, is not a running quarterback like RG3. He stays in the pocket. He is a pocket passer, as they call the quarterbacks that stay in the pocket and pass the ball. He's not going to do anything risky with the ball and, you know, risk an injury, risk a concussion, something like that. No, he's not going to do that. He's going to throw to his key wide receiving targets like Julio Jones and Tony Gonzalez. For Russell Wilson, he's got to get out of that pocket and use his legs and run the ball like nobody's business. Marshawn Lynch has got to be also a key to beast mode. He's got to be in beast mode. I think he will. I think he'll do just fine. And I think the Seahawks will escape uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And I think they, I want to say they're going to go to Candlestick. I want to say the Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers will meet in the NFC Championship game to decide who goes to Super Bowl 48. It's going to be fun. It is going to be one fun weekend of NFL football. And I know there's a lot of other sports going on. You got the Lakers and Thunder tomorrow night. That's going to be a clash. What a game that's going to be. Wow. Seahawks and Falcons. Go Seahawks. Go Seahawks. WrestleMania is definitely in full swing right now. As they just released those t-shirts a couple days ago. The WrestleMania t-shirts. You heard of Tebow Mania last year. We got WrestleMania here in the Northwest, and especially in Seattle. But I am a Seahawks fan, and I live here in Canada, British Columbia, Canada. Moving into our next segment, we're going to break first. You got it on the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Bob Phillips sitting in for the sick Caleb Turner live on the Anchor Radio Network. Safeways weekend deals on donuts, pastries, and other things you might like to eat are on sale this weekend only. You can buy two donuts for the price of one, two boxes of pastries for the price of three, and of course, all the other deals that Safeway has every weekend. All that and more at your local Safeway, doing things better. You are listening to the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. And now your host, Caleb Turner. Bob Phillips back here live on the Caleb Turner Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network. Into our next segment, the difference between mayonnaise and Miracle Whip. Now I know a lot of you definitely like Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. Maybe one of you like Miracle Whip and hate mayonnaise or like mayonnaise and hate Miracle Whip. But if you're wondering out there, there is a difference between mayonnaise and Miracle Whip. Here's the thing. You got two thick white dressings with similar similar flavor and similar looking jars are bearing down on you from your refrigerator. And you're asking yourself just one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do ya? Deli goers and anyone killing time in the checkout line are people you can impress with this next segment. Here's what you do. You let somebody taste them side by side. And whatever the sweeter one is, you know it's Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip and Mayonnaise. Here's the explanation. In 19, excuse me, in 1756, the French... Under Louis Francois Armand de Vignoreau du Plessis du de Richelieu, 
captured Mahan on the Spanish-held island of Minorca. In honor of this victory, the Duke's chef created a new dressing for his master, Mahones. It wasn't until 1905, however, at Richard Hellman's New York Deli, that Americans got to taste the goods. But boy, did it catch on. Within seven years, he masked, marketed the condiment as Hellman's Blue Ribbon Mayonnaise. To be frank, mayo is one of those love it or hate it things. The lovers know that in its most authentic form, mayo is a pretty simple affair. Raw egg yolks, oil, lemon juice, or vinegar, and spices. Not much room for improvement. But in 1933, Kraft Foods, though differently, inventor Charles Chapman's patent and emulsifying machine allowed regular mayonnaise to be evenly blended with cheaper dressings and more than 20 different spices plus sugar. The result was Miracle Whip, which debuted at the 1933 Chicago World's Fair, promising to create salad miracles with Miracle Whip salad dressing. The Whip... Excuse me. The Whip was an instant hit. It's not known if the dressing is responsible for any non-salad-related miracles. The main difference between Miracle Whip and mayonnaise are the sweeteners. High fructose corn, corn, man, I, I think Caleb struggles with it as much as I do. Corn syrup and sugar are the fourth and fifth ingredients, respectively, of Miracle Whip. While we're on the subject of condiments, we couldn't resist the opportunity to squeeze in a quick fact about mustard. Or more specifically, Grey Poupon. While it sounds hoity-toity, the name Grey Poupon isn't so much about the mustard's color as it is the Grey and Antoine Poupon. The name can be a bit confusing and even unappetizing to French speakers as Poupon means newborn baby. That is the quick fact about mustard in our mayonnaise discussion about the differences between mayonnaise and Miracle Whip. I, for one, do not care. I do not care what I'm putting on my sandwich, as long as it's one of the two. Mayonnaise or Miracle Whip. I prefer Miracle Whip. Okay, I do have a preference, but I don't really care. But if I had to say one way or the other, Miracle Whip, I would rather have on my sandwiches. Miracle Whip and mayonnaise. 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 However you like to pronounce it. Mayo, mayo, mayo. I don't know. I don't know what you guys pronounce your food. There's so many different foods that you can mispronounce. And car brands. I got this friend, car brands. He pronounces it Nissan. It's Nissan. Or Nissan. Not Nissan. Nobody pronounces it Nissan. Am I going to call it Fard? That's Ford. Fard? Or Chevrolet. Chevrolet. What else you got? Lexus. Lexus. Mercedes. Mercedes. Unbelievable. Car brands. You got food brands. Reese's Pieces. Everybody pronounces it Reese's Pieces. They pronounce it Reese's. Reese's Pieces. Or Reese. In fact, a lot of people pronounce it Reese. Reese Pieces. What's that? What is that? There's so many things that we could talk about, about mispronunciations. It's pretty crazy. But that was a wild, uh, crazy name. This guy's name, this is how long it is. Louis Francois Armand de Vignerot du Plessis Duc de Richelieu. That's his full name. Louis Francois Armand de Vignerot du Plessis Duc de Richelieu. Now, that last one is the Duke of Richelieu. But that's his name. That's part of his name. That's pretty crazy. That wraps it up today for the Caleb Twitter Talk Show on the Anchor Radio Network, a abbreviated edition. Bob Phillips in for Caleb Turner, as Caleb Turner was under the weather, but he will be back next week. And I hear, at least he told me, that next week's broadcast is supposed to be the cat's meow, the dog's bark, the dog's woof, the chicken's cluck, 
your fish's little bubbly sound, whatever your cricket or, excuse me, fish sounds, I don't know, your bear's growl, your lion's big roar, you know, any other things, your elephant's trumpet sound, whatever the elephant sound is. I don't think it's called a trumpet, I think. Um, any other things that your animals make the sounds of, it will top that. It will definitely beat it. Thanks for tuning in to the broadcast. Bob Phillips in for the sick Caleb Turner. You got it live on the Anchor Radio Network. This wraps up the January 10th Thursday edition in the year 2013 AD. You are listening to the Anchor Radio Network. You are listening to the Anchor Radio Network and a presentation of the Caleb Turner Talk Show. Tune in every Saturday for more Caleb Turner Talk Shows on the Anchor Radio Network.